We totally get it, but how about you explain what you think it means first? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 sci fi movies no one understands. For this list, we'll be looking at sci fi films that left audiences scratching their heads, required some serious Googling to comprehend, or which people are still debating years after their release. Please note, we'll try to keep spoilers to a minimum, but in some cases, we may need to reference a film's ending as part of the discussion. Let's go. Number 10. Inception. Between installments in his influential Dark Knight trilogy, filmmaker Christopher Nolan told one of the most compelling original stories to hit the big screen in years. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. This reality-bending sci-fi action drama is not only a feat of both practical and visual effects, but also extremely tightly crafted. Something, isn't it? Yes, it is. Led by Leonardo DiCaprio, the ensemble film follows a group of thieves who enter dreams in order to steal or implant information. As the characters dive ever deeper into sublevels of shared dreams, however, it's easy to lose track of reality, and the concept of limbo only further complicates things. I just didn't understand the concept that hours could turn into years down there. That we could get trapped so deep that when we, when we wound up on the shore of our own subconscious, we lost sight of what was real. Then there's that ambiguous ending, which has generated endless discussion. And then he threw us yet another mind melter with 2014's Interstellar. Number 9. Annihilation Based on a 2014 novel by the same name, Annihilation is the sort of film that you watch, discuss, rewatch, then watch again. Anything interesting in there? No, it's been long abandoned, maybe even before. And even then, you're probably going to want to look up some professional analysis to unpack what's going on. The film follows a group of women, each experts in their respective fields, as they venture into The Shimmer, a mysterious quarantined area of coastal land characterized by strange events following a meteor impact. Filmmaker Alex Garland brings a surreal environment to life in beautiful fashion, but explains very little about how it works. Let's not jump to conclusions. I don't know, maybe we should. Add to that the nonlinear storytelling and the fact that the shimmer affects people's memory, and it all makes one seriously perplexing viewing experience. It's literally not possible. It's literally what's happening. Number 8. Predestination There are two ways you can approach time travel in cinema. He always knew this day would come. You can do this. Either you come up with a streamlined theory for how it works within your world and you spell it out for the audience, or you lean into its complexities and embrace its inherently brain-busting qualities. Predestination falls squarely into the latter category. Preparation is the key to successful, inconspicuous time travel. Luck is the residue of design. Starring Ethan Hawke, it tells the story of an unnamed temporal agent who embarks on various journeys throughout time in an attempt to thwart a bombing. A dense sci-fi thriller, Predestination is just over an hour and a half long, but it crams an insane amount of twists, turns, and reveals into that runtime. You might want to have a notepad handy for this one. But when the dust settles, I think you'll, you'll see that we did the right thing. Number 7. Solaris Вы что же, хотите уничтожить то, что мы сейчас не в состоянии понять? Простите, но я не сторонник познания любой ценой. The 2002 American version of this film is certainly worth checking out. But if you're looking to experience the uncomfortable madness of Solaris in all its glory, you've got to go back to the 1972 adaptation of Stanislaw Lem's novel. Отлично. Вот пусть он сам обо всем и расскажет. Made by Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky, Solaris is a heady journey into outer space that's more interested in questions of the mind than technology. When the crew of a space station orbiting the planet of Solaris begin experiencing hallucinations, a psychologist is sent up to help. Upon arriving, however, he soon begins to succumb to strange visions of his own. 
The film packs a serious emotional punch and serves as both an inquiry into the human psyche and a test of its fortitude. Any счастье, смерти, любви. Может быть, ты и прав, но попробуй не думай обо всем этом. Number six, Cloud Atlas. Our lives are not our own. From womb to tomb, we are bound to others. Past and present. After the runaway success of their 1999 film, The Matrix, the Wachowskis were heralded as the next great sci-fi auteurs. Unfortunately, beyond the trilogy that launched their careers, they've rarely managed to recapture that magic. If, however, there's one other movie in their filmography that feels comparable in terms of both ambition and complexity, it's Cloud Atlas. Based on the 2004 novel and co-directed by Tom Tickver, this sci-fi epic traces the implications of our actions as they ripple throughout time. I understand now that boundaries between noise and sound are conventions. But with the ensemble cast playing up to six roles apiece across various time periods, the film's emotional core can easily get lost. Like so many similarly complex sci-fi films, Cloud Atlas polarized critics. No matter what you do, it will never amount to anything more than a single drop in a limitless ocean. What is an ocean but a multitude of drops? Number five, Naked Lunch. When the source material is as mind-bogglingly confusing and experimental as William S. Burroughs' 1959 novel, well, any adaptation that was easy to follow wouldn't be a very good one. Though a box office flop, David Cronenberg's cinematic reimagining of this twisted tale earned itself a long list of awards and a devoted cult following. I thought you were finished with doing weird stuff. I thought I was too, but I guess I'm not. The plot, for those interested, follows an exterminator on an increasingly deranged adventure after he's poisoned by his wife, resulting in severe hallucinations. William Lee, I have arranged all this just to have a moment alone with you. The entire thing plays out like a fever dream and is the sort of film that asks its audience to just come along for the ride. Given all the overtly uncomfortable imagery in this film, that can feel like a pretty tall order at times. I got to say I'm proud of you, sir. It took you a while, but you got us red-handed. Number four, Primer. Like we said when talking about predestination, time travel films tend to be fairly complex and hard to follow by nature. But whereas the Ethan Hawke film is challenging as a result of its many moving parts, Primer is actually a rather small story. The time travel occurs within a relatively short period of time and is mostly limited to a suburban garage. Okay, okay, you hear that? How it's, uh, how it's, see, I'm not touching it anymore. It's growing with its own momentum. It's like a feedback loop, and it just regulates itself. And what you do is when it gets there, you bring it back, and there you go, it coasts. What makes Primer so freaking complicated and difficult to understand is rather filmmaker Shane Carruth's commitment to making the time travel as scientifically founded and realistic as possible. I mean, this isn't frame dragging or wormhole magic. This is basic mechanics in Heat 101. For this reason, the film is held on a pedestal, one so high that few can actually fully appreciate it. And it must have been beautiful with all the praise and adoration he had coming. Carruth's 2013 follow-up Upstream Color is no easier to digest. Number three, The Fountain. Before blowing away critics and cinema goers alike with The Wrestler and Black Swan, Darren Aronofsky first befuddled audiences with this 2006 film. Friend, I trust you. Show me. An epic romantic drama spanning space, time, and reality, The Fountain seemingly goes out of its way to be complicated. It tells three overlapping stories of doomed romance with Rachel Weisz and Hugh Jackman as lovers drawn together and torn apart across time. Will you deliver Spain from bondage? Upon my honor and my life. It's also a contemplation of mortality and an investigation of how far people will go to cheat death. But when you add a chronological narration into the mix and some seriously trippy visuals, well, it's little wonder that the film scared away its audience. Number two, Donnie Darko. Though well received by critics, Donnie Darko was initially dismissed by many moviegoers as superficial, self-indulgent teen fare because its release coincided with the rise of emo music. 
I can do anything I want. And so can you. But with time, Richard Kelly's dark psychological thriller has come to be recognized for what it always was. An extremely intelligent film boasting a staggeringly good performance from a young Jake Gyllenhaal. Donnie is experiencing what is commonly called a daylight hallucination. Tackling issues of mental health, the pressures of adolescence, and time travel in one emotionally charged story. Donnie Darko is an extremely ambitious film, especially for a directorial debut. Despite the odds, it largely succeeds, even if its complexities means it loses viewers along the way. Kelly's follow-up film, Southland Tales, is notably less successful, but rivals Donnie Darko in terms of the confusion it inspires. As if you need any more lack of understanding or confusion, here are a few more honorable mentions. Under the Skin Little is explained in this moody film, leaving the meaning totally open to interpretation. The Quiet Earth. Time and space, life and death, this ending will leave you scratching your head. The Man Who Fell to Earth. This surreal sci-fi flick is weird like only the incomparable David Bowie could make it. You know, Tommy? You're really you a remember freak. the first man in your life? I don't mean that unkindly. I like freaks. Mr. Nobody. A non-linear story about a life lived across a multiverse. Confused? Yeah, us too. The little baby can see his hands, but he cannot see himself. So, does he really exist? Cube. A Canadian precursor to the Saw franchise, but more cerebral and paranoia-inducing. No more talking. No more guessing. Don't even think about nothing that's not right in front of you. That's the real challenge. You gotta save yourselves from yourselves. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Its reign has lasted over half a century to date. No other sci-fi film befuddles quite like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Not even its own sequel. I don't understand. Neither do I. Among sci-fi filmmakers, it's probably the single most widely cited influence. But try as they might, the disciples of Stanley Kubrick's 1968 masterpiece can't seem to put together a film quite as compellingly ambiguous. The movie follows a space mission to Jupiter prompted by the discovery of an ancient alien artifact, but the plot almost feels secondary. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Across its 142-minute runtime, 2001 addresses a myriad of themes, including evolution, AI, and existentialism while offering up some seriously trippy visuals. When it finally draws to a close, it's with an ending that people are still unpacking and analyzing today. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.